Hi everyone, I'm really excited to be sharing this pattern with you. It's my anthropology inspired pomegranate love cushion. It's a pretty long cushion, so perfect for snuggling up uh, on the sofa or using uh, on your bed. And I've got the details for both this version and a smaller version on my blog post. So be sure to check that out and get the row by row instructions for those. For this video, I'm just going to show you how the cushion is worked up and um, use a swatch to do that. So let's get started. The first thing you'll need is your yarn and corresponding hook. I've used for this pattern, uh, the large pattern, uh, Aran weight yarn. This is Paintbox Cotton Aran in light caramel and red wine. And these are just the colors I chose because I quite like the combination. I thought it was quite unique. Uh, but you can use whichever color combo you prefer. And of course you need a corresponding hook size and here I have a four and a half millimeter crochet hook. And because our cushion is going to be worked in the round, which is great because it minimizes stitching the different panels at the end and weaving in ends. However, um, to make it easy on ourselves, we will use stitch markers so that we can always see which is the front and our back panels. Let's get started with our swatch. And of course, if you are following along, just make sure that you are using the right number of stitches and not really um, just repeating what I'm doing here. I am just doing a swatch for demonstration purposes. Uh, so make sure you check out the blog in uh, the description box below to get the proper robot array instructions, the number of chains and stitches you need to work with. Uh, but to get started, the first thing you'll need to do is chain uh, the appropriate amount of chains and then uh, start by placing a single crochet stitch in the second chain from hook and continue until the end of your piece. For the purposes of this video, I chained uh, 45 chains, so I now have 44 stitches uh, and I'll use those to show you the different parts of the panel. So once you've done your single crochets, bring your piece, the two uh, edges of your piece together, making sure um, your row of single crochets is not twisted, and then place your hook through the first stitch and slip stitch the two together. And again, I have a detailed video tutorial if you want to see how to do the slip stitch in greater detail. So now our two sides are linked together and we will then weave in this end to make sure that this gap here um, is closed as well. But to continue with our next round, I've just chained one and in the same space, I'm going to do a single crochet. And that is the first stitch of our front panel. So I will place a stitch marker so that I can easily remember and distinguish it from the rest. The pattern does help with this, but better safe than sorry. So in the second stitch, I will put a popcorn stitch. And the popcorn stitch is really just made of a series of double crochets placed in the same stitch. And for the purposes of this pattern, uh, it's four double crochets in the same stitch. And again, if you'd like, I have a de detailed um, stitch tutorial for the popcorn stitch. But essentially you place four double crochets in the same stitch, take your hook off that loop, find the first double crochet, fourth, third, second, first, and go through the top of the stitch, find your, lo uh, your loop here, find your loop, put your hook through it, and pull it through that first double crochet, and then you'll chain one. And you'll continue by placing a single crochet stitch. And that's really what you're going to do for the front panel of uh, your second round. Place a single crochet and a popcorn stitch, a single crochet and a popcorn stitch. And for your last stitch for the front panel, you should end up with a single crochet on this round. So I'll go ahead uh, and work up to that point with my swatch 
Obviously mine is going to have a lot fewer popcorn stitches than yours will. Um, but I will then show you how we um, slightly change the stitches we use for the back panel. So I'll meet you back in a second. So here I've done a series of popcorn stitches uh, followed by single crochet stitches. And I've done my last popcorn stitch here and I will do one further single crochet stitch. And that um, is at that point that once you've completed the right amount of popcorn stitches for the pattern that you're following, um, that you will place a stitch marker here as well. And therefore you know that the stitch markers you place represent the first and the last stitch of your front panel. And so you know that the stitches in between represent the back panel. So what you're going to do now is actually work a series of single crochet stitches along the uh, remaining uh, single crochets, but you're going to place um, the single crochet in the back loop only. So as you know, with a normal um, single crochet, we pick up both the loops of that stitch. This is the front and this is the back. But to do a back loop only single crochet, we'll pick up the back loop only, like so. And this just creates a nice little ridge effect in the back to give your piece some interest. And it will help later on when we start adding our second color, particularly when we start making the stripes. It will just make um, make the two colors look slightly more distinct and the effect will be more like stripes rather than um, just mingling two colors. So the, the, the definition will be better. So I'll go ahead and finish up this um, remaining round and then I'll meet you at the end so that I can show you how we join again the two sides at this level and then what the next round looks like. So now I've reached the end of my round and you can see here that I've got my stitch marker where my first, uh, first stitch is and I've just worked a back loop single crochet in that re last remaining um, stitch here. So to connect my two um, little pieces, I'll remove my stitch marker Go to that first stitch, which was a single crochet, and slip stitch. Chain one, and do another single crochet in that same space, like so. And then I'll replace my stitch marker. So again, I've got it handy for next for the next row to make sure that I know where my first stitch is. And for this round. I will just place a single crochet stitch across all stitches. So remember the number of stitches um, you started with, that's the number of stitches you should have at the end of this round. Just make sure as you're going through this row that you're not confusing, um, you're not adding additional stitches because we did that chain one on top of the popcorn stitches. You need one single crochet on top of each popcorn and then one in between them, nothing else. So just keep track of your stitches, uh, make sure you don't add uh, any extras. So you'll go ahead and place a normal single crochet on top of each stitch for the um, front panel and then in the back panel you will um, again do the back loop crochet and then you'll connect it just like we connected um, the previous row. So I'll go ahead do that and then I will meet you at the beginning of our next round to show you how we offset our bubbles. So here I'm almost ready to complete this uh, round and I have one last remaining single crochet stitch to work in the back loop. I'll take my stitch marker off like before and I will slip stitch into that first stitch like so. Here however 
because I want to offset my popcorn stitches, rather than placing a single crochet in this first stitch, I will actually place a popcorn stitch. So instead of just chaining one, I will chain three, and this will act as my first um, double crochet. So rather than doing four double crochets for this beginning, um, my first, I guess, popcorn stitch of this round, I'll place three double crochets. Um, so there we go, this is my third one now. So here I've made three double crochets plus my initial um, chain three here it counts as my first double crochet. So I'll go through that, pick up my loop, pull it through, chain one, and there we go. And then I'll do a single crochet. And this is how you offset your popcorn stitches. And then now that I've made my single crochet, I will make another popcorn stitch with four double crochets as usual. And I'll continue exactly like I did before, um, following the pattern instructions. I will then go ahead and do another um, round of single crochets. And of course, remember to replace before you do any of that, remember to replace your stitch marker by putting it on top of that popcorn stitch. And what you'll do is, like I was saying before, you're just going to continue by placing single crochets, popcorn stitches all around the end, uh, all around your piece. For this last stitch um, here of your front panel, you will find that you'll have to place a popcorn stitch here as well. So just take care that the stitch after is not a normal single crochet, but it's a back loop single crochet. So go ahead and finish off this round and then place another round of single crochets, just like we did for the previous one. So normal single crochets here and back loop single crochets here. And again, I'm not going to repeat this every time, but you always work your back panel uh, by using these uh, back loop single crochets that just create this additional texture and, and interest. So now, so now I've reached the end of my piece again and I need to connect uh, and slip stitch to my first um, stitch. However, um, what I want to do is connect a new color so that I can continue my popcorn stitches. So there are two options for me. I can either slip stitch chain one snip of my yarn and then connect the new color or I can just continue by um, simply dropping this color and attaching the other one. Um, either works. Um, for the purposes of this swatch I'm gonna keep this yarn attached because there's not that many rows um, in between the, the color changes but for um, this part of the actual pattern you may wish to cut off your yarn and attach this one afresh um, simply because you will have quite a few rows of difference uh, between the two colors but it's really up to you and whatever you feel most comfortable with. So to connect this piece um, I will slip stitch as I did before and I will not chain one with this color. Instead, I will take my new color and pull um, yarn over with my hook and then tighten the red color in the back and then do a chain one. And again, tighten those loops. And what you can do is you can take that um, light caramel uh, extra piece of yarn and simply um, cover it or hide it behind your new stitches. So what I will do here is I will do a single crochet stitch in my first stitch. Remember we will be offsetting our stitches to the previous row. We're always offsetting the stitches in this part, in this section of the pattern. I want to do this one more time. And here I have my new popcorn stitch in the light caramel color. I'll 
one, two, three, four. Go through, chain one. And so you can continue in this way again until you have worked around. Um, and for both colors, if you're following the pattern, uh, depending on which pattern you're following, which size, you will have a slightly different number of rows of popcorn to do for each color. Um, again, for the purposes of the swatch and just to show you the different techniques, I will do two of these rows, so another two rows, and then I will show you how we work the main piece of the pattern where you're regularly exchanging between the two colors and just share a few tips and tricks to minimize the amount of um, weaving in ends uh, at the end of this project. So I'll meet you back once I've done another two popcorn rows and then have one uh, remaining row and have done a, a row at the end of single crochets. So here I've finished with the additional uh, popcorn rows that I wanted to do, plus I'm um, finished off with a row of single crochets, which I'm about to connect and slip stitch here. Um, remember that when you're working with the actual pattern, you will have more rows to do for both colors. Um, but I just want to go through the basics of the pattern and the different uh, stitches and techniques used. So now we'll revert to the pattern where you see one row in a light caramel and then another one in red. So to do that, you will basically keep your colors connected here at the beginning and you will pick and drop depending on the row you're in the right color so that you can continue working this in sort of a continuous way. In the middle, when you're creating the different uh, popcorn stitches or the different popcorn designs, you may want to attach additional skeins of this uh, light caramel yarn, or you can also carry the light caramel yarn along your piece when you're creating your uh, red rose, because it is on the rows where we have single crochets with this red color that we actually have the um, pattern, the popcorn pattern, emerge um, with the light colors, with the light caramel color. However, what I prefer to do, just to give uh, my piece, uh, um, I think, a more finished look so that the white doesn't protrude from the red, which can happen sometimes depending on how you keep your attention and how focused you are on your work. Um, I like to just have a couple of skins, extra skins of that, and just attach them at the right places. You need one at the beginning, which is this one, then you'll need one in the middle and one in the end if you're doing the um, full pattern. And just drop and um, keep my red yarn in the back whenever I need to do um, popcorn stitches in the light caramel, uh, rather than carry the yarn and, and also, I guess, use a bit more of that yarn. But I'll go ahead and explain right now what I mean by this. So here we have, we're at the end of this round and I need to slip stitch. And of course I know that my next uh, round is gonna have to be made in the color red. So here I've slip stitched and I'm gonna drop my white or light caramel color yarn and I'm gonna pick up from several rows below this red one and then I'm gonna chain one and chain another one to stabilize the yarn and pull the light one to make sure that this is all sitting quite snugly. And then I will go ahead and um, put a first stitch in that first, a, a single crochet in that first stitch, and that will be a back loop single crochet. So for the first row, all you need to do is just do back loops like this, all across your piece and then at the appropriate time connect your new skein of your light caramel color. So if you needed to connect a new uh, caramel color in this stitch here then you need to finish the previous stitch with the light color yarn, that that light caramel um, color yarn. So here, rather than yarning over with the red color, you would actually 
yarn over with your new caramel color um, like so and then I will just tug the two edges here to make sure they all look nice and then I would make sure to carry both pieces both the red and the white along the way and this just helps secure them so in this case here let me just start over because my yarn was splitting in this case here I know that I have to make a number of uh, light caramel color popcorn stitches so I'm just going to do it like that and you can see I'm carrying both the red color and the caramel color with me and my original caramel is here so let's continue doing this Oops. let's do one more double crochet And you will just follow the pattern instructions here. I'm just doing it for demonstration. I'm just going to do a few uh, popcorn stitches just to show you the techniques and how you um, change the colors. But let's say you needed And of course, we finish our popcorn stitches in these rows where the popcorn stitches are made in red. You need to always finish them with a single crochet. Because the row is meant to be in red, that means that this single crochet uh, needs to be in red as well. So actually, we need to finish off our popcorn stitch with the red yarn. So we go like this, but rather than chaining one with the same light color yarn, we use this one here, like so. And now we drop our light color yarn. We just make sure that it's nice and snug and we just leave it there and continue doing single crochet stitches in the back loop along the rest of the row. Essentially, whenever we're not working popcorn stitches, our single stitches, uh, single crochet stitches are worked in the back loop. The only exception is when you're doing the single stitches in between the popcorn stitches. And this is really how you build up the pattern. Now, there are um, some places or some rows where you will need to do a popcorn using the red color, but that's pretty self-explanatory. The one further trick I want to show you is how do you take this piece of yarn and bring it back to the beginning so that when you're doing your next row of popcorn stitches for whichever pattern, this piece of yarn is at the right place for you to pick up so you don't have to cut it and then reattach it. So I'll show you how to do that on the single crochet rounds and it's actually very easy and I find also it helps add some additional stability to your piece. So I'll finish this round and meet you back um, here essentially to show you how I um, transfer essentially this piece of yarn so that it's ready for me to pick up. So here I finished my row, my row of uh, red essentially and you can see that by working in the back loop only you get a fairly clean um, almost row or strip of red um, so that's one of the the main reasons to use the back loop um, crochet on this pattern so here of course I want to connect again and slip stitch into my first stitch and I will drop my red because my next color will be the light caramel and I will pick up this light caramel that is underneath that same space, the same place. It's basically the light caramel um, yarn ball that we used for this section rather than the one in the middle or any other part. So we're just going to connect it just like we did before. Chain one and then chain one again to make sure that it looks, um, it's, in, it's in place. 
and pull it as well, pull the red to make sure it's nice and snug. And you're gonna go ahead and place again a back loop crochet along each of the stitches. Now this would be just that essentially, but for every part where we've added a new skein of light caramel yarn across the piece, and I know I've only done it here once, but it will be in a couple of places in the actual pattern. What we want to make sure that we do at this round is that we bring the yarn at the right place where we will need to pick it up later. So this will depend on your pattern, but you want to bring the yarn more or less to where the light caramel color starts again. So once you've reached that point, take your light caramel yarn, the one that is attached to the bubbles, and just bring it over like that. So it's almost as if you're reversing its um, its direction, right? And just keep it there. And again, because you're working over bubbles, you're going to put a normal single crochet rather than a back loop crochet, single crochet, like this. And what you're going to do is you're just going to make sure that you're capturing this yarn and securing it in place so it's on this other side. And this way you can pick it up on the next round and it's going to be at the right place for you to continue making your designs. And that's really all there is to this. And so that's how um, you build up this pomegranate love um, anthropology inspired cushion. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and do check out the Roboto instructions included in my blog. It's a very big cushion, so it would have been impossible to actually redo it for the purposes of this video. But I hope that you found uh, the demonstration of the different stitches and techniques helpful. Uh, and I do hope that you give this a cushion a go because it's really lovely and it looks uh, pretty good, almost as good if not better than the Anthropology original cushion that inspired me to make it in the first place. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial, I hope you found it helpful and happy crochet! <laughs>